hearing be? If the whole were an ear, where would, where would be the sense of smell? But now God has placed the parts, each one of them, in the body just as he wanted. And if they were all the same part, where would the body be? Now there, are, now there are many parts, yet one body. So the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, nor again the head to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, all the more, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are necessary. And those parts of the body that we think to be less honorable, we clothe these with greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have a better presentation. But our presentable parts have no need of clothing. Instead, God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the less honorable, so that there would be no division in the body, but that the members would have the same concern for each other. So if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Good. Okay, we can stop there. Right? So now we get in. So now there's a... a, a a caption of what caring is all about. It's seeing that each part is necessary and carry out its function. But do we live in respect of our own person seeing that our own physical body has have needs do we think about our eye muscle do we think about our zoan uh, the our ears or zen do we think about our tongue the only time we think about our tongue is when Me huh? Me no you didn't think about your tongue it gets hurt. that's right when you bite it. it that's the only time you think about it you only think about your body when it is when it's in pain you know and C.S. Lewis again he said pain is God megaphone to get whose attention man's attention but do we hear are we hearing and look at something Paul is clearly saying that each part of the body is necessary in order to demonstrate care but do we know when we are hurting? Because we are only so self-righteous and conscious, we forget that we are a body. And we have different members, different parts, diversity of gift, yet um, um, in a singularity. Diversity in plurality. We are diverse, but yet... We want, we're plural, we're many, but what? One, because we have one, one mind. And whose mind we have? We have the mind of Christ. And if we have the mind of Christ, Christ must dwell in our what? In our mortal bodies, so that we don't fulfill the lust of our, our self, our own hearts. So now we're seeing here that Paul is clearly stating how we ought to function internally. So now, if you don't function right internally, can you function right outside? No. It's impossible. So now, Christ says, if any must follow him, let him pick up their cross daily and follow him. For we are like lamb to the slaughter. And he said also that when you go, who we ought to represent? Yeshua. Did Yeshua care for us? Yes. How we know he cared? He died, on the cross. he died on the cross. So he died on the cross, but were you there? No. So how does that relate to you? How does his death relate to you? How do you know that he cares for you? You see, this word, care, it comes from a Hebrew word, to fell. And to fell, what that literally mean? What, what, that, what does that word mean, to fell? When you care for something or someone, if you go back in Genesis, let me see. If you go back in Genesis and you see 
Hashem, Yahweh care about mankind. And he said, And he said from verse, um, from chapter 3 and from verse 20, And Adam named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. The Lord God made clothing out of skin for Adam and his wife. So when you care for someone, what do you do? He, he, hear what he did? He made clothing of skin for Adam and his wife. Now, that is a very piercing statement. He made clothing of skin for Adam and his wife. And what is that showing us there? That who cares? Hashem. He cares. He cares so much that what he did. Two hypotheses. Two hypotheses there. Where he get his skin from? He get his skin either. One hypothesis is that he killed the animal. He made the first killing and he what? Presented clothes of skin for them. Second hypothesis is that he himself now covered mankind with this, this skin what we have here. That is another hypothesis. Right? And two schools are taught. However, we're not going into that, but the point what we're trying to establish here is that when you care what you do, this word, to fell, it means to What is that? To fell means to attach. When you attach something, what that implies? Stuff. What does it imply? When you attach something? You're part of that. Yeah, you become part of it, but what, what does it, what attach mean? Relate. No. Think a break. When you attach something together, what it did? Permanently bond something together. Good, very good. You kind of like mend it, or you sew it. Or you 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 become well, one. That's right. Welded with that thing to attach means something. What permanent? When you are attached to another, it becomes something permanent. This is why can a child say or a mother say that is not my child? Nope. Yes, she could say it. Yes, he could say it, but would it be true? No. Why? They are attached. Even they are individual, they are attached how? DNA. Spiritually. This attachment is deeper than what? The physical realm. It goes to the very fabric or the very essence of our being. So to care, it means to what? Attach. So now, when we say we care for this world, just as how I, Rabbi Lewis, care for all of you, then I must do what? I got to attach something to you. What are we to attach to each person that we come into contact with? We ought to attach his word. His word. And when you present Yahweh's or Yorhe Wavhe, Yeshua Mashiach to all mankind, what would they want to be attached to him? No. Definitely not. They wouldn't want to be attached to him because he is Kodesh. He's different. Yes, he's permanent. And when you think that is permanent, it changes it this what? It is quiet. You, it makes you this discomfort. It brings this comfort to you. So now, that word that when he made clothing for Adam and Eve, that word that they use for clothing is 
Boged. And you know what Boged means? You know what Boged means? Boged means rebellion. And also, there are three Hebrew garments that is notable to be worn by all Jewish men or the Jewish culture. And those three pieces of garment is Boged, Levosh, and Mel Me Mayer. And those three pieces of garment, Bogesh, it means the one who rebels. Levosh means embarrassment. And Miel, to take that which does not belong to you. So now, the clothing that you have on, this physical clothing, but more so your skin, is a reminder that what? One, every time you look at the skin, what are you supposed to remember? That you have been what? Rebellion. Rebellious. You have been rebellious. To who? First, yourself. You are an embarrassment to who? Yourself. And three, Yael. To take, you now take in that which doesn't belong to you. So you see, the very act of caring, it starts as you identify a person and they look upon their what? Their flesh. So now a person can have on clothing, but what we in our culture, we like to look at? What, what we like to look at? Do we like to look at the clothing of pure persons? What we like to look at? Nakedness. We like to look at their nakedness, their flesh. And when we look at their flesh, what it does to us, it brings and it stimulates ideas in our, in our mind. And what does that do? 